morning. So, as you can see, I am in a slightly different place than I normally am. All my stuff, sorry, I am a little, I'm like 13 minutes behind when I wouldn't normally be here, but um, you know, I'm a little bit, um, if you're on Instagram, you might be able to see my little baby Jack Reacher who is wondering what's going on here. And if you're on Facebook, you might see a little fluffy tail, like, boop up. <laughs> He's a very cute little baby cat. Er, hello, baby Jack Reacher. Anyway, hi, hi. I'm in a slightly different place than I normally am. Hi, little baby Jack Reacher. Come say hi to the people. Oh, <gasps> hi, you're a very cute kitty cat. <laughs> this is not what I signed up for, is what he is saying. Any hey, any who, hi, I am coming to you from a different location, because reasons. <laughs> Normally I am in my office, so today I was like, I'm just going to be here in my living room. <laughs> so, with like art from my children on the wall in behind me, look at that, it's like art from my children, and the, in the poster size inside of a piano, that's a photo I took, and some wonderful, uh, a wonderful print from my sister-in-law. I did that one. I'm so fancy. That's my children. And then my, um, I mean, she's a cousin of a cousin. Oh, yuck. Thank you. Cousin of a cousin. Uh, anyway, I, um, she's like almost my cousin. <laughs> she's, we're cousin adjacent. The wonderful Carly Gordon, Naomi Beth Hill. Take a look at them online wonderful Canadian artists. Okay, and then like I said, my kids <laughs> all over the place here. Okay, okay, okay. Enough, enough with the like, hi, I'm in a different location and also want to view my gallery wall. Enough, enough, Shannon. Enough of that. Hey. Oh, yuck. thank you, thank you. <laughs> wonderful. Um, hey, so, welcome, welcome to Live Office Hours. Uh, I've got my laptop on my lap here, um, just so I can make sure that I say other things I want to say. Yeah, I took some notes today. What? What? Uh, right. My name's Dr. Shannon Coates. I'm a singer, an educator, and a pedagogy maximizer. Blah, blah, blah. I am coming to you live. Hi, good morning. My name is Arita Holmes. I am coming to you live from, thank you, Pretty Pinkies. Yeah, I agree. Coming to you live from uh, a little town north of Toronto in Ontario, Canada. These are the traditional lands of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishina, Bewaki, the Mississauga, the Wendake, New Wensio peoples. Um, in an attempt to keep land acknowledgements from becoming uh, performative and to sort of stay engaged with the reason that we do, that I in in uh, particular do land acknowledgements. I would love to draw your attention to the beautiful and challenging work. Um, it is fiction and it is absolutely oh, um, killer cloud of bone by Bernice Morgan. I will link that in the comments, but that is something if you love fiction, if you love a sort of fantasy, but oh, it'll, it, it'll, oh, if you love that, that may be something to read. Um, Part of what I do is I develop resources for independent voice teachers, although academic teachers, I like hanging out with academic teachers too, but you know, <laughs> mostly, mostly independent voice teachers, Partic in particular, independent voice teachers in my faith. So uh, regularly engage with in this way on live office hours on Facebook and Instagram. And of course, all of those replays are available on YouTube. YouTube is a, on my YouTube channel. That is a better way to like search for things. YouTube is, right? It's a better search channel uh, than Facebook. Facebook will give you something that you're like, oh, wait, what was that? And anyway, so uh, all of them are available there. I do also have a Vimeo, but no one goes on Vimeo. Whatever. And live lectures, the Evolving Voice live lecture series. I have postponed the live lecture series. It was supposed to start next week. And then I was like, why am I doing this to myself? My sister and her family, who I never see because they live in Holland, are coming on Saturday. And so why? Why am I doing this to myself? So I postponed it to August. So uh, if you are interested in that series, it is in August now. 
And I also put it over, uh, so it's on Wednesdays, three Wednesdays in a row in August rather than three days in a row. So it's a little less intensive and perhaps that will be a better schedule for you. That is kind of some of the feedback that I am receiving as well as though I don't have to be teaching while my sister's here. I think that's a good thing. New to me, we have the VoicePad 101 library, which is currently open and it is also in a sort of like beta phase, which means that if you would, uh, if you're interested, the VoicePad 101 library until uh, September 1st, lifetime membership. So feel free to get that if that is interesting to you. So right now, all of the live lectures, right now there are about 10 hours of live lectures in there. So there's there's a whole bunch of library. <laughs> there are, your enthusiasm makes me feel buoyant. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> this is super enthusiastic and all of the exclamation marks. Bring it on. Bring it on. Um, the library is uh, currently, there are three neurodiversity affirming voice pad lectures in there, including inclusivity, uh, building inclusivity in the voice studio, as well as lots and lots of resources along with that. Um, and then uh, there are Diagnostics 101, which is one of my favorite um, uh, lectures, as well as How We Learn 101. So two really foundational, I think, really foundational pedagogy uh, lectures. And as of September 1st, the Evolving Voice live lecture replays will be in there. And as of likely October the 1st, or maybe the middle of October, the um, uh, Vocal Instrument 101 will be in there too. So that is all lots of fun stuff that you are very welcome to take advantage of if you would like. Here we go. Let's just, good, good, good. <laughs> all the stuff. Oh gosh, okay, I'll say this too. The voice ped, thank you, with the renal cards. I feel like they are amazing. I feel like they are. And I will also be adding, like the, the uh, you can also get a year long uh, subscription. You can also do a monthly subscription where you just like pay 97 bucks you're there for 30 days, watch whatever you want, uh, as many times as you want, and then uh, get out if you want, and then join again when a new lecture comes in that you're like, yeah, I wanna see that one. All good. Lots of different price points. And like I said, until the 1st of September, you can get a lifetime subscription, and then you never, you just always have access. So <laughs> feel free to do that if you would like. Okay, blah, blah, blah. The voice pedun degree is coming. We just finished class of 24, so class of 25 is opening. Sound. So if that is something you're interested in, um, in fact, if that is something you're interested in, I do have a whole, but I do have a big, like, I don't know, listy list. But if you want to make sure that I contact you specifically, reach out specifically about it, or that you get the information that you, oh, hey, hey, oh, yeah, let me tell you, uh, Bianca, um, the, oh, wait, let me finish the other thought. <laughs> the, uh, VPUD, if you're interested in doing that, uh, send me a note just so that I make sure that I click like that. I make sure you're, you, I'm, I'm contacting you. The lifetime subscription is, ah, I can't remember. I think it's, I think it's $1,500. I think it's right in that range. It's right in that range. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's talk, let's talk. Today we are talking about, so the last th two live lecture, or live office hours, <laughs> everything I do sounds like slightly the same, so it just like trips off from like the voice ped 101 library where the vocal instrument 101 will be, and also come to the voice ped undegree, like <laughs> too much. Anyway, it's fine. Uh, the last two live office hours that I did, so last week's live office hours and the live office hours before that, uh, um, Child Voice 101, we were talking about repertoire, appropriate or appropriate repertoire, what does that mean? And then last week we talked a little bit about um, creating a safe space, like no such thing as safe space. And particularly, that one was particularly within the kind of context of working with adolescent singers. Um, for both of those, I actually wrote a subscript. A subscript. I actually wrote an article <laughs> on Substack if you love reading or if you would like a condensed version of those, if you'd rather not listen to me talk for an hour and you'd much rather just read it, that's over there on Substack. Substack. Yes, that's what it is. Uh, feel free to take a look at those. Um, but the thing about both the appropriate repertoire and the safe space, creating a safe space, is that 
Although I was talking about both of those things within the context of child voice and adolescent voice, um, respectively, those topics and concepts are 100% applicable to a vast, uh, uh, to many different kinds of voice students, right? So thinking about the choices we make about appropriate repertoire, supporting choices, um, allowing and uh, supporting, giving the singers we work with the information that they need in order to make choices about repertoire and lots of other things, that is absolutely applicable to all of the singers we work with not just to working with children. And then the same thing about creating a safe space and the idea of what it means to create a safe space. Um, that is obviously not just applicable to adolescent voices or adolescent singers or adolescent students. Um, and so same with the topic that we're talking about today. Today we're talking about a particular kind of power dynamic or student hijacked. <laughs> Sometimes we're in like, we're like, I'm just trying to be student led here, but it feels student hijacked because I feel like I just like have not like they're they are not like regarding there's a weird power dynamic going on here right like this is strange this power dynamic and that can certainly happen with many different kinds of singers regardless of age range of course lots of people we may have a difference in terms of that that power dynamic I shouldn't put that in quotes because it's a real thing power dynamic <laughs> the relationship so, however, I put it into the context of aging voice, not only because we have evolving voice coming up and all that stuff, but uh, those classes, but because I often see this happen and voice teachers often talk to me about this in the context of I am a younger voice teacher, either younger chronologically or at the beginning of my teaching career. Oh. Gosh, that's a that's a great question. Knowledge on working with students who have had radiation therapy due to thyroid cancer. Um, I send me a DM if you don't mind. I can probably put you in touch with some folks who would have some information about that. Yeah, <laughs> or who might be uh, who might have some information about how to. Yeah, yeah. Send me a DM. Um, it's a good question. Uh, the sorry I got squirreled there, uh, aging voice. Often this particular dynamic comes up with younger teachers or less experienced teachers, no problem, who are working with older, uh, not necessarily chronologically, but also more in terms of experience, right? So often we've got perhaps a young singer, a young teacher, excuse me, or perhaps not a young uh, teacher, but someone who hasn't taught much or who is just starting their teaching um, and then they're working with someone who either has more experience and or who is older than them. And so that power dynamic can be a little bit weird, right? The students or the parents assume uh, there's this weird like kind of, there can be this kind of level of assumption around your level of experience especially this does also this can also come up when we as younger teachers or less experienced teachers are working in a home studio so we have a home studio set up um, and so parents sometimes assume that they uh that you're not like there's this kind of weird there can be this kind of weird little power thing going on about how the legitimacy, if you will, or the realness of your teaching um, or of your experience because you are working out of a, your home, right? So there can be this kind of weird little power dynamic going on, perhaps with the parents of the singers you're working with, um, or perhaps with someone who is a professional uh, or who has a career, uh, in like an adult singer who has a career that where they go to the office every day, right? And so then they come to your, you know, your office and it seems very not business-like to them, or it may, you know? So they may make some assumptions about the quality of your teaching or about your level of expertise based on the fact that you are teaching out of your home. This happens quite a bit. This is, I, I'm not, I have no like data, data. This is all anecdotal. This is from, years of A, teaching out of my own home studio, <laughs> and B, working with lots and lots and lots and lots of independent voice teachers, right? Um, often, 
uh, often we may have folks who are working with, so when I first started to teach, um, I had, I worked with, I still uh, remember some of the singers who I worked with who they respected, if you will, my teaching because I had an undergraduate degree in vocal performance in Western classical music. And so to them, that was a qualification for teaching that they could respect. Even obviously they had no idea <laughs> because that is that certification does not mean anything about the quality of your teaching, but whatever. Um, and so, and at the same time, they had, you know, these were, many of them were experienced choristers, right? Uh, so experienced singers who had been singing in, like, some of them had been singing Messiah longer than I'd been alive, right? Some of them had, you know, like, they have, like, these big, huge choral works basically memorized because they've been singing. So these, these singers are giving me a little bit of sort of respect for my expertise because they think that I, you know, they think that they afforded it to me because of my degree. And at the same time, they're looking at me saying, this person has only been singing for like 15 years. I've been singing for 50 or however long. And so there's this weird, you know, this little kind of power differential that can be challenging. There are lots of other reasons that the power differential may feel off. One of those, and, and I don't need to say that we want to be in a power differential, excuse me, or a power relationship where the teacher is like, right, and you must respect my authority. That is not what I, if you know me at all, you know that that is not what I am saying. I'm gonna talk about how you know that the power differential or how you know that the relationship is peculiar, how you know that something is a little bit off, in a minute, but the other kinds of situations that uh, come to mind are, for example, uh, especially folks who are petite, um, especially folks who have higher voices, uh, which often are petite. Petite folks often tend to have higher folks, uh, higher voices. Excuse me, folks who uh, uh, who we perceive to be younger, so often petite, often higher voices, right? All of the sort of things that we associate with being younger or not serious. So if we perceive someone to be, to have, to be uh, uh, a not serious person, oh, <laughs> <my God. laughs> let me say, <laughs> this is, and there, and there's like, it's me. <laughs> I'm not adding anyone here. I am saying purely from my experience, anecdotally working with lots and lots of voice teachers <laughs> that this is something that happens, right? Like you're saying, this is something that happens. I happen to be a tall person with a relatively, <laughs> even your hair, yes, yes. I happen to be a tall person with a relatively low uh, speaking voice. I happen to take up some space. So there is a level of authority, if you will, that is afforded to me because simply because of that, my five foot one soprano femme self is in this club. Yes, Sarah, <laughs> so much, right? So much, I know. And yeah, like I happen to be five nine and I happen to have a lower voice and I happen to like take up some space, you know? Uh, and so those things, those things mean that often not always, of course, but often folks will, and I've always looked older than I am. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's over on uh, Instagram saying the five foot one soprano club. Yes, exactly, exactly. Which means that, um, Sarah, I, I never was able to play children on stage. <laughs> You're gonna be able to play children on stage for the rest of your life, probably. <laughs> if you are young, young on stage, I was never able to. Look at this face, it's too square. Cannot make it happen. Anyway, I'm always the mother. <laughs> Bless. <laughs> okay. All that to say, often the way we per the way we are perceived, especially if we are perceived as younger than we are, especially all of the things that may come together to communicate or to for the person who is taking lessons with us to perceive that we are young, etc. All of the things that come along with that mean that especially if you might be working with someone who is older than you are or someone who is male 
um, or mask, uh, and who is just in society, mask, um, there are some things that may happen where your, again, that power difference or that relationship in terms of the expert in the room or the authority in the room in a very positive sense, not in the power over sense, but just in terms of the like, someone, I would love to have a little bit more engagement and buy-in from this singer and I am not getting it. That can be skewed for so many reasons. So here are some, here are some ways to recognize that, yes, here are some ways to recognize that you may be in, you will, Yes, ADHD shows up a hundred percent. So this is the other thing. I'll say this too. Uh, this is this can be very gendered. Um, uh, uh, folks who are socialized female um, or perceived as female, we tend to uh, mask our ADHD uh, into charm, if you will. Right? Not always. Absolutely not. This is the way that I tend to have gone. I'm also Canadian, so that may have something to do with it. But I went into like self-defacing. Oh my God, I forgot again. <laughs> like, I, you know, we go into that kind of like fawning, if you will. So that then also may contribute. Whereas if you are a socialized male and or perceived as male and ADHD, well, you're a really like adventurous guy. And of course you forgot your keys. God, it's so annoying that you forgot your keys. It's fine though right? Like, mm. so there is absolutely a different perception in terms of gender as well, right? This, the, it is very gendered. And purple hair is amazing. We should have purple hair. Mm. All of these things can lead to a slight, like just, yeah. Okay. What are some ways to recognize this? Uh, you will likely have recognized it already at some point in your, in your body or uh, uh, some kind of reaction. Uh, or just the feeling of uncomfortableness, or like uh, lots of uh, uh, women voice teachers I have worked with as I am observing them work with an older male singer. Um, I, uh, we have conversations afterwards because I observe them making space for that male singer in a way that I don't think is healthy or I think is learned, right? We, we sometimes we're like, oh, it's okay that he talks to me in that way or that he, and you can feel inside yourself that there is a something not quite right, but it's okay. And also there's that inherent, well, I am young and I am not, maybe I, you know, I'm not as experienced as they are. And also maybe they also had a teacher, maybe they've had lessons with someone really famous uh, before, right? And so here are some ways to recognize and to validate that feeling inside of yourself of like, I think this person doesn't really, isn't really buying in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Isn't it interesting that those students often choose the less powerful teacher? Mm-hmm, often, yeah, often. <sighs> okay, here's some, here's some objective things that you may hear and or observe that I would love for you to, if there is someone you were working with who you feel like, I think something's off, but I don't know, maybe it's just them, maybe it's just me, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Here are some things that you may hear and or observe. There, uh, they, again, I said this in, the, in my discussion post earlier this week, they have goals and they are not willing to share. Oh, Liz, the way the rages are bubbling up right now, I know, right, burn it down. I'll tell you what, when I am observing young female voice teachers, um, I have not yet observed a non-binary or a gender non-conforming uh, voice teacher working in this way. So this is just consistently with uh, young female uh, and female presenting, uh, femme presenting voice teachers working with older men. It happens more than you think. And it is, it is heartbreaking for me like obviously, you know, heartbreaking is maybe the wrong word, but yes, there are some rages that come up in there because the, 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 our instinct so often is to just sort of give space and to not like 
you know, just to be like, well, you know, that's just the, like, they're just, well, they're a really nice person and they're an old friend or they're like, you know, a friend of my parents or blah, 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 like whatever. Like we sort of give all of this space to them that is not, mm. all right. They may, they have goals, but they're not, they're not sharing them with you. So this is a big one uh, I have observed many times where they'll come in and they will say things like, uh, they basically communicate that you wouldn't know, right? So they'll say things like, well, yeah, I just like, I want to sing better. And then when you, when you, or they're taking lessons and like, I just want to, you know, I just want to, I want to work on this one little part of my voice. And they're communicating that it's not that big a deal. And also they're kind of doing you a favor by letting you work with them on this thing. And also you probably wouldn't know anyway. Like, so it's fine if we don't get there, like it's fine. So there's specific goals or the things that they, like they're not quite honest, if you will, about their specific goals. They're not willing to kind of be open about that because first of all, they are, they don't necessarily think that you can get them there. And they also aren't sure. Yeah, yeah, you, you probably wouldn't know anyway what the, what, you know, so like, or I want to, um, you know, I sing this particular kind of music and like I'm doing this, but you probably like, yeah. So what does that, what does that, like that, you may hear that kind of those words, but if you find yourself really in this, like, okay, they're never really, they seem to know exactly what they want. This isn't a case of like a perhaps singer who hasn't, who's, who hasn't quite come to articulating yet what they want. This isn't a case of a singer who is not quite uh, aware yet of, of their deep reason for taking voice lessons, right? This is the case of a singer who does know what they want and who does have a goal, but who, for whatever reason, it feels like you're being blocked all of the time to just like get to the actual goal. And it feels like it's like amorphous, like you're just trying to continually just trying to get there, but it's very cloudy, but you feel like if you could just get through, maybe they would say the thing, right? And it feels like there's no chemistry. Yes, it can really feel like that, that there's no chemistry. And again, the words that may come out of their mouths around this particular uh, kind of thing are things like, well, it's okay. We don't really have to work on that because, and, and what they're communicating is because you wouldn't know how to do it anyway. You're not probably going to be able to get to me anyway. And they are also communicating this, like, I'm doing you a favor by being here in the studio. And so you're like, you know, you're just lucky to have me in the studio and I'll go commune. I'll go ask someone who's better than you what I want to do like about this thing, because you probably can't get me there anyway, right? Student hijack, that is a hijack. <laughs> that is a hijack, that is not student led. That is not student led, yes. If you think I can't do this, why are you here? Oh, because I'm doing you a favor. Uh huh, because I'm doing you a favor. And also because like, I just wanna, you know, I know, I know. They dismiss your feedback or suggestions. This looks like, Yes, but I hear you, but, um, no, I don't think that's, I don't think that's what's happening. No, this isn't, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's because X, Y, Z. Okay. There is another part of this where I have a very, um, I have a very, I think I'm on record. I think very strongly on record saying that any feedback that we are offering, you want, we want to make sure that it's something they have already said to us anyway, right? So like, this is something to really consider in terms of the way that we are offering feedback and giving directives. I want to be able to have uh, my feedback or my directive. I very much want it to be something that is based on something you have already said to me. So there is that dynamic. And at the same time, if we're working together and you give me some kind of feedback about your experience that says, well, it felt really, uh, it felt breathy or it felt like more this, or it felt like I got more relief in this part, or this was a more open, or that was a brighter sound, whatever. Great. And you say, yeah, I think, I think that 
that's great. Can I hear it three more times? And uh, how much brighter can it be? And then they say, no, but it wasn't really like brighter. It was, <laughs> or they say, yeah, I don't think that's the way that I'm going to be able to get to it. Or they say, no, that's not going to be useful for me. I think that's not the, that's not what I want to do. Okay. Okay. That's very interesting. Again, there is a fine line between student led and student hijacked, right? These are, these are, students are allowed to say, that's not going to work for me. Okay. We're going to get to that in a minute. What, what do I say? And what do I, what do I say? How do I work through some of this? Uh, especially in a student led way where I'm trying to, you know, support this singer, but these are taken as a whole, as well as along with your internal sense of, I'm not sure that this person actually thinks that I'm good at my job <laughs> uh, or is taking me seriously right now. Hmm. Taken along with that, that is something that may be an indication that they do not. Um, something else that may uh, be an indication that they do not take you seriously and or do not think that um, you are good at your job and or <laughs> all of those things. Um, they remind you of how much more experience they have and or of the other voice teachers they've worked with a lot. So they say things like, well, so-and-so said, and they don't say it in good faith, right? So there is a difference between, oh, that's really interesting because so-and-so was talking to me about blah, 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 and I feel like there's a connection between those two, or I feel like that wasn't quite as like, I feel like that was more useful. I can see the direction you're going in here, and I feel like this is actually the one that's gonna be more useful for me. Like that's a good faith reference to a previous experience with another voice teacher and or a previous experience in a singing um, situation, right? That is good faith. We know when it's not good faith, when it feels like you are attacking me or comparing me to the other person, right? So, or there can be, um, you know, the, the good faith question where you're just, you're saying, okay, so when so-and-so said this to me, do you feel like that would mean that this, or do you feel like that would mean this? Great, those are good faith questions. When they say, yeah, well, so-and-so told me to do it this way and that's gonna be better for me, that doesn't feel as much in good faith. That feels a little bit more like, well, when I was working with so-and-so, they told me blah, blah, blah. And when I was, and you're telling me blah, blah, blah. Like that is a, that is a slightly different thing. So if there is a constant reference to previous experiences and or previous voice teachers and or previous experts or YouTube, <laughs> or the YouTube references, the constant, yeah, but buddy on YouTube told me <laughs> that is, uh, that may be an indication that they are not on the same page in terms of what the, what, how you are, how they are perceiving you in terms of buying in. Again, please understand that I am not talking about, uh, power over situations where they are not giving you the respect you deserve. Like that is not what I'm talking about here. I am absolutely not asking for singers to be in the studio compliant, right? And showing respect in the way that I need you to show. That is not what I'm talking about. I am truly, I am talking about all of the times when we lessen ourselves, when we move into ourselves, when we, well, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, but all of the times when we are not valued as the expert that we are in the room, all of those times, right? And by someone who is bringing that into the studio. All right, couple of things to think about when you are recognizing that this disconnect is happening. Um, yeah, it can feel pretty bad, for sure. Couple of things to, to think about, couple of things to do um, and or to um, best practice, best practice. Uh, First of all, recognize how you react to feeling undervalued. Start to recognize, right? So you start to recognize these phrases, you start to recognize these things, you start to put them together with how you're feeling internally, recognize what that does to you. Do you go into freeze? Are you like, okay, this person isn't buying in, this person is not agreeing with me, this person is uh, uh, like questioning everything, this person is not like with me, do you freeze? And then all of a sudden the lessons feel like molasses. You cannot get through them. You are swimming in molasses and you are abs like every, every, you're second guessing every single thing that comes out of your mouth. 
you go into like full on like you may appear angry you may appear um like you are uh, uh well yeah like you go into freeze mode right because it's protective because it feels like you are being attacked and it feels like you are not being respected uh as who you are right so you may go into freeze mode recognize that it's so important to recognize how i am uh, uh, what this brings up in me and what my what my uh, uh, what my reaction is how do I deal with this the second one these are all you know all of these you may freeze <clears throat> you may fight you may go into fight so you may fight you may go fully defensive where you're like yeah well they don't know blah 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 and I am like you may go into this like hmm fight you need to you need to recognize that I know what I'm doing. You need to blah, blah, blah. Like you may go into fight and that may be useful for you. I don't know. I'm just recognize what it is. You may fight. You may go defensive, uh, offensive, excuse me, rather than defensive, right? You may go offensive and, and start to blame the student, right? There is also this, um, there is also this part of the fight where you say, well, they're just an entitled person and they are so full of themselves and they are questioning everything and blah, 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 right? We can go into a fight. We can go into fawn. Lots of us who are socialized female, um, uh, we uh, can go into fawn, right? I can get real charming real quick. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Liz. I can get real charming real quick. So I feel like I'm not being respected or, and again, in the healthy sense, or I feel like the person who's there is like really questioning everything and really communicating that they are not on board with this relationship, even though they're paying for it. Um, and then I start to be like really charming, <laughs> like even more charming than normal. <laughs> but I go into like super charming, giggly. I might get a little bit like we're we're gonna be palsy palsy because I that is one of the ways that I have uh, figured out that I can get out of danger, right? So I know that that is a way that I can protect myself, and so that is that is uh, that is definitely a uh, response that I know that I will have. It is a charm offensive, a hundred percent. I'm not saying any of these are unhealthy. I'm not saying. I mean, to a certain extent, obviously, all of them are, but. But I'm not saying that this is these are wrong. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be doing them. I'm saying we're gonna recognize what's happening, right? I can't change anything unless I actually know that that's what I'm doing. So that's the first thing is like recognize what, how am I responding when it feels like there is a disconnect in this relationship? How am I responding to that? Fight, am I fighting? Uh, do I get defensive and, or offensive, excuse me? Do I go into offensive mode? Um, not offensive to offend you, but you know what I mean, like to fight. Uh, to put you down, to put you in your place, to make sure that you know that you're who you're dealing with. Do I go into into fawn? Do I get like super charming and make sure that I'm not, you know, that I win you over regardless? Do I go into um, freeze where everything just slows down and now the lesson is 400 years long because I cannot, like I, there's no, nothing I can offer, nothing, like I go right out of flow. Uh, what was the other ones? Fight, flight, flight. <laughs> do I just say, well, obviously, um, like, do I just get myself out of the situation, right? Obviously, we're not a good fit. And again, that might actually be pretty healthy to do that, right? And I'm just gonna let's, I'll refund you your money and let's go. You, you could do that, right? There are all of these options. Recognize what your response is. That's the key to the next part. So the key, I'm recognizing my responses. I'm understanding that this is how I'm gonna deal when this comes up, when this disconnect, when I start to feel this disconnect, when I observe that this is happening. Um, what did I fight, light, fawn, freeze? I think there's one more now too, right? I think there are five of them. Maybe there are even more, I don't know. If someone remembers what the other one is, let me know. Because there is another, I think there's another one too. Fight, light, fawn, 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 fawn. Um, I only wrote down, I only wrote down three of them here. <laughs> e, because I'm a hack, you know. <laughs> there it is. Self-deprecating. Hey dear, Canadian. Um, um, right, best practices. I recognize 
how I am going to react. I recognize Yes, thank you, Peggy, Paging Megan, Peggy, Paging Megan. I could probably Google it too, but I recognize how I am going to react. I recognize that this is a reaction that is coming up in me. Flop. Oh, that might be one. Yeah, flop might be. I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, recognize your reaction. What am I doing? There is also the reaction like of simply, maybe this is, maybe this is part of um, fawn, maybe, because it doesn't necessarily have to be charming to be fawning, right? You could be just in this sort of like giving way more space than maybe is necessary, right? Um, offering way more grace than maybe is necessary. And I don't mean offering grace in the negative sense, I mean in, or in the positive sense, I mean in the sense of where I lessen myself. Where I take myself, I get smaller, I lessen myself, I take myself out of this uh, picture uh, and I come in on myself so that you can have more space and that is not great. Maybe that's flopping. I don't know. I think it's fawning. I don't know. All good. Okay, recognize, recognize that that is a thing that you will do, recognize. So then it becomes data, right? Then it becomes the thing where you say, oh, I see that I am going into chat events up here. I see that I am getting really like, I've got to be like, I've got to teach them what they're doing wrong right now. I am, uh, uh, I'm completely freezing. I cannot say anything else. I'm locked. Uh, whatever it is, recognize this is a thing that is happening right now. That's one of my favorite things that Michelle Marco DeVoe says. Recognize this is a thing that is happening to me right now. This is a thing I am observing about myself. This is happening to me. <laughs> recognize because it is data. So let it become data. This is information that will allow me, that will act as a prompt for me to get curious for me to go into a space where I can ask some questions or where I can decide what, uh, whether I want to continue with this relationship, right? So I can get curious about this. So then once I'm, once I'm out of, or once I know that I'm in this state of relative dysregulation, if you wanna, or however we wanna talk about it, once I know that I'm in this state, I recognize this, this is data. I am reacting in this specific way. This now is my prompt. This now is my uh, trigger in the positive sense. It is the prompt that will allow me to get curious or that will tell me that I am having this thing and I'm gonna get curious. So some of the things that you can then do are ask some of these questions. If you are a uh, 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 some of these questions to the singer you are working with, right? So if it feels like there are no goals, they have nothing, they're not able to give you any kind of information because you wouldn't know anyway. The questions that were always kind of seeding and asking, I've been painting recently, can you tell? I've got a little bit of extra paint on my hands. Um, What are you hoping? So the, the question that I'm always asking people, I'm always, uh, always asking, the question that I often recommend, that I would recommend uh, to start a relationship in teaching and to ask continually, to sort of continually seed is after working together for you know three months, what would you, what will you be able to do that you haven't been able to do before? What are some of the things that you uh, would like to like? What is some of the things you'll be able to sing that you haven't sung yet before, etc. Right. So those are some of those opening questions. But now you get really specific. What are the things that I uh, uh, that brought you to me in particular? What are you hoping I can offer that will help? Like. Yes, what do you, how are you hoping that things are gonna change in three months of working together? But specifically, what are you hoping that I will be able to help you with? Specifically, what is the thing that I am going to offer? So those are the things you're gonna seed. That's the question we wanna to start to uh, really seed to the people who it feels like 
are not, uh, uh, when we're working with them, who it feels like they are with you, not because of you necessarily, but because they want to take lessons and you happen to be the closest, uh, because they're doing you a favor, because they're a family friend and they know you wanted to you know, develop your studio or whatever the reason is that they're there with you, right? You can start to see those questions of like, what are the specific things that brought you to me in particular? What are the things that I can offer you? If they are not able to come up with something that you in particular can offer over the next, I don't know, six weeks or whatever, give yourself a time limit, give yourself a limit on this, put up your boundaries for yourself, that may be, it may be an indication that this is a singer who would benefit from working with someone else. If they cannot articulate to you specifically why they are here with you. I'm not saying that you should do this with every singer you work with. The vast majority of singers you work with are going to be there because of you. Or if you're working in a music studio or you're working, you know, like if you're working in a, uh, a multi-teacher studio or, um, or whatever, lots of, lots of singers are there uh, because you were just assigned to them. Right, so you, you, and that's, that's fine too, but they, you may not, they, they have buy-in, if you will, because you're the teacher from the studio, if you will. Um, so lots of, lots of singers are not gonna, you're not gonna be in this position with lots of singers. However, when you feel like you were in this position, when you are hearing these, those dismissal, the yes, but, the, but my former teacher said, um, YouTube says, blah, 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 time to like ask these questions what specifically and then if if there is if it is not possible for them to find an answer to that over a certain amount of time you get to decide this is probably a singer who get who first of all you get to decide whether you want to continue to work in a way in that in a way in that with that singer and to continue to sort of be in that in that relationship you are allowed to continue to be in that relationship I would be very cautious about recognizing it and then continue to be in it because that is, you're gonna like, why? But if you want to, you can. I'm not saying you should. You can make, you can make your choices. Mm. Understand the consequences of that choice, but you can make the choices. Or you get to decide, this isn't a singer I wanna work with anymore and they're gonna work a lot better with someone else. Great, thank you. That's totally allowed, right? Um, the, when you're, when you're feeling, uh, when you're getting, when your feedback and or directives and or thoughts, ideas, et cetera, are being dismissed or are being um, downplayed or being yes, but, if you're hearing yes, but a lot, um, and that is bringing up some stuff, your next uh, question can be something like, how will you know, first of all, what has been the best directive for you so far? What has worked beautifully for you? And how did you know that it was working? What changed? How did you know that it was working? Can you sing that for me like four times and tell me which one felt like it worked the best for you? Terrific. What was it about that one that, why did it feel the best? What was the best thing about it? So in this kind of curious space, especially if you're in a shutdown place, um, in this kind of curious space where you give them the space to tell you about the thing, you may start to open up some of the respect there. There may be a movement into a slightly different relationship dynamic because you are starting, because you are creating this space where they are telling you lots and lots of things and but you are facilitating that again this is a tricky balance and you've got to be pretty regulated yourself to be able to do it right you've got to be in a pretty good again you've got to be in the space of observing and i'm curious this is data rather than in the space of this disrespectful little jerk <laughs> right if you're in the this disrespectful little jerk who i cannot like I cannot get through to and or blah, blah, blah. If you're in that space, you will not be able to, that relationship, you are probably going to want to say, 
oh, the other teacher might be better for you. You've got to be in the space to be able to stay observant. This is data. I am curious to be able to ask those questions. Again, give yourself some time on it, right? So you're gonna, you can give yourself three weeks, you can give yourself six weeks, you can give yourself a little chunk of time to try these things out, to get curious. And if it is not working with that singer, you are allowed to make a decision. You're allowed to say, hey, I think you might work really well with so-and-so and I would love to recommend that you go work with them. I've talked to them already and I've set it up for you because I think they're gonna be able to serve you better than I can. Hey, you're allowed to do that. What was the other one? Okay, they keep reminding you of how much experience they have and or what their former teacher and or someone on YouTube said. Again, I recognize that this is pissing me off. I recognize that this feels like they are, why are you even taking lessons with me if YouTube buddy was so much better? Like, why? Why are you getting right? I recognize that's what that's bringing up in me. Okay. I'm going to observe that that is some interesting data about myself and how I am reacting. Great. That is great data. Now I'm going to get curious about it. So tell me about your favorite directive. Tell me about the most important piece of information. What was the, uh, um, what, when you were singing with XYZ, what was what was the what was the turning factor? How did you feel supported by X Y Z? What were the things they said specifically that made you that helped you to know that you were supported in your learning journey? What were some of the things uh, the exercises that they did? What were some of the um, music that you sang with them that felt the best uh, over time? What was so you're gonna get curious? You can get curious about YouTube um, coaches as well, and you could say. What was, what's, what was the most revelatory thing that you learned from Buddy on YouTube or TikTok? Why do you keep following them? What are some of the things they say that you think that are so useful for you, right? So I'm, I'm getting curious about it. Again, this requires you as the teacher to be in a spot, a place where you can observe. I am pissed at this person. <laughs> I want to turn them into loving me. I need them. I want to, I want to, uh, uh, I want to just run away. I want to stop teaching them right now. All of those things are valid. You are allowed, but you need to be in the space to be like, this is, this can only be successful if you are in the space where you are observing that and that is data and you are able to get curious, right? I'm observing. This is a thing that is happening. Hmm. Interesting. I'm gonna get curious about why they are doing this thing, about what is so important to them about this, about what is that, what is uh, so impactful, why they, you know, if someone is telling you about, if someone is, if you're working on something with someone and they are, it feels that they are dismissing the work you're doing because they have sung in XYZ ensemble. They have done XYZ work. They have, you know, they've sung with XYZ conductor, etc., for however long. And they are dismissing the work that you are doing together because of their experience. Get curious. What did you love about working in that, uh, in that um, choir? What did you love about that conductor? Why did you love working with that conductor so much? What can we do in this relationship in order to have that same kind of feeling. What are some of the things that made that experience so impactful for you? How did you know that you were singing better? How did you know? What could you do that you uh, couldn't do before? What options did you have that you didn't have before? Can you show me? I'd love to hear some of that. If you can get curious, you may find that the relationship goes from student hijack to student led, right? So that we move from that student feeling the need to be in complete control because they don't think that you're good enough, hijacking. You may find that you're able to move from that hijacking into student led, where they are able now to communicate the things that they love 
so that you can work together in that way. Again, give yourself some time on it. Give yourself a couple of weeks, month, however long you want to give yourself to see how the relationship changes. If the relationship does not change, if you want it, let me give you permission to say, this isn't working for me. Here's, a, here's someone else that I would love for you to consider working with. You're allowed to say that. If you need it, you have my permission. If you want it, you're allowed. You don't have to continually work with a singer that makes you want to fawn, uh, freeze, fight, flight, flop. I don't know what the other one is, right? You don't have to continually work with a singer. You don't have to continually work with a singer if, if, with, that is bringing that up in you. You absolutely do not. And also, maybe it's a growth opportunity. Maybe. And also, maybe the growth opportunity is saying, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to find the singers I love working with. Right? Okay. Again, the reason that I talked about this in, in the uh, context of aging voice is that often aging singers uh, often the initial uh, relationship can be challenging uh, because aging singers have, may have an extra level of vulnerability that are, that are in, that's sort of part of um, the process of their voice not being as reliable as it once was, or them not being able to access their voice in the same way as they once did, or not feeling as easy as it once did, or them not getting the same level of joy or etc. out of the singing that they once did. So there is this extra level of vulnerability. And uh, with aging singers working with young singers, uh, young teachers, there can be as well this disconnect because you're like, uh, as an aging singer, you're like, okay, you have never experienced a day of like, not knowing, there are some assumptions made here, of course, but you've never experienced a day of not knowing whether your voice is going to work or not. So, and also this experience of, you know, ageism, like where I'm, I'm coming into the lesson as, a, as an aging singer, as a matured singer, um, uh, girding myself to, uh, you know, putting up this armor because everywhere else in my life, I'm experiencing ageism. So I'm experiencing being put on the shelf. I'm experiencing being dismissed. I'm experiencing being, uh, you know, having less of a voice than I am used to having because simply because of my age. Again, there is, there's balance here. There are some other things at play. I'm not saying necessarily, I understand what I'm saying, but, uh, uh, so I may actually, as an aging singer, come into a lesson very on the offensive, right? Or on, or feeling very defensive because of that vulnerability, which then may come out as, I don't trust you. I don't think you can help me. I don't think that you know, you, you wouldn't know anyway. That can come out that way. And it isn't necessarily because I actually believe that somewhere. It may also just be because I am in this like very vulnerable spot in my life. So you as the teacher are going to recognize this is bringing up some stuff in me. And that is going to be my prompt when I feel this thing to get curious. I'm going to ask some questions. I'm going to just see what else might be going on here. And if we're talking about this kind of, you know, dismissal of the voice teacher due to the vulnerability of those experiences in, uh, in an aging singer, you may just find that the relationship changes as you get curious. Um, as soon as you uh, stay, as we stay in our uh, reactive state, the opportunity for that curiosity leaves. And so then the opportunity for those interactions to change, for that relationship to change is, there is 
far less of an opportunity for that to change. So, all right, we've gone on long enough. Today, we did some of the reasons there may be a peculiar kind of power balance in, uh, in a studio relationship, some of the situations that may be there, uh, some of the ways to recognize some of the actual, you know, things that you can observe, words you may hear, phrases you may hear, actions you may observe that tell you that that can validate, yes, I am having this experience right now, uh, how to perhaps some, some practices, some thoughts on how to uh, move from how to change that relationship. And also some um, permission if you want it to say, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I want to work with people who that I don't have to work this hard with. <laughs> and that's okay. You're allowed. <laughs> All right. Have a terrific weekend, friends. Terrific weekend. And uh, let me know what you think about those things. Blessed. Oh, yes. Have a terrific weekend. <laughs> Wonderful. Take good care.